Since the fall of man, a war has raged between good and evil. Over the centuries, this war has distorted the truth. Now the truth is perceived as lies, and lies acknowledged as truth. To this day, the battle continues as we investigate and debate the truth behind the history and mystery of the universe. We are Paratruth Radio. Now Paratruth presents Scarefest 8 Live. Hey, Para fans! Welcome to another episode of Para Truth Radio. I'm Justin, and I'm Eric, and we are at Scarefest Eight Live. So far, it's been an amazing day. Uh, met a lot of neat people, and definitely probably going to meet many, many more. So, uh, just to give you guys a heads up, we are at the entrance to Scarefest. If you guys are here and you're listening live. Definitely come and check us out. If not, definitely let us know that you guys heard the broadcast. We'd love to hear from you guys. So, Eric, so far, what's been your your favorite so far? Uh, honestly, all the shopping for the most part. Now, <laughs> I'll, I'll say for, the, for those of you Christians out there, probably not the best shopping. Uh, you know, when you see dolls that are dead, but not you know, obviously they're not literally dead because they can't be. They're dolls, but <laughs> <laughs> a lot of gruesome stuff. There's a teddy bear that is just torn apart. It's got huge teeth and blood dripping from it. It's pretty nasty. Yeah. But, you know, what do you, what do you expect at a place called Scarefest? Yeah. Or a convention called Scarefest. Uh, have met a couple of great people. Um, one in particular was the... F- I keep forgetting their names. The ones that you invested... Oh, or talk- Off the Trail of Paranormal. Yeah, so I finally got to meet them. And actually, so you guys know, in a little while, we're going to go and talk to them live, you know, get a, get a feel of what they're experiencing and what's going on for them here. Uh, other than that, there was a guy, I'm not going to give any names right now because we might have him on later uh, mm-hmm. in the year, but I did meet someone here who wrote a book that I think might be right up our alley and someone that's pretty keen on getting on the show. So passed on the cards and he gave me his and we'll see what's going on. But tonight, I think it's all about having fun. Most definitely, and uh, like I said, you guys, if you're listening live, definitely come check us out. Uh, we're about to walk through the front gates here and just kind of get a feel for things. So a lot of the stuff here, as Eric said, if you are one of our Christian listeners and you're very uncomfortable with the paranormal and horror aspect of things, definitely understand that uh, you guys will not be here. Uh, but if you are comfortable with it, we just found Waldo, so <laughs> uh, definitely come check us out. Uh, definitely some scary, scary stuff. I actually got to meet Sid Haig from uh, Devil's Rejects and uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and got to talk to him a little bit. Very interesting guy uh, and actually might have a chance to get him on the show. He actually let me leave one of our new business cards with him and... Um, So, we are coming through the entrance here. They've got the Scarefest uh, mobile, I guess, on one side, and then uh, another creepy car in the front here. Uh, When you first walk in, you see the Ghost Hunter shop, which is actually Patty Star shop who runs Scarefest. So, definitely check out Ghost Hunter shop if you're into the paranormal and you're a ghost hunter. uh, Definitely check them out. Uh, We've got... A lot of different vendors here, uh, Dark Corner Collectibles, uh, Lunatic Cosmetic Labs, which is actually vegan and cruelty-free cosmetics as well. Do you know that red lipstick isn't coming from the blood of a chicken? Right, basically, yeah. So <laughs> they definitely have some really neat colors as well. Uh, we've got uh, a, a bunch of different occult practices for you guys that are Christian listeners, obviously, like we said, not a place to be if if you're uncomfortable with it. If you feel the pull to be here just because you're interested in just seeing that type of stuff, uh, definitely come check it out. Uh, 
we've got uh, a bunch of great things here. We've got uh, Do You Want to Get Zombied, which is a custom portrait done by a lady here, and she turns you into a zombie and uses your different interests to kill you with. And uh, she can dif- do it different ways, different freshness, if you will, of the zombie, whether it's a new kill or a, a one that's a little bit older. Uh, so me and Eric would thought it would be cool to be killed by a werewolf or killed by our own microphones. So uh, I don't know how that would work for a zombie yeah, if a, if a werewolf sure. killed you. So yeah. I'll tell you, you know, and not just those, but there's some other stuff that we have come across while we're here too. And believe it or not, I have met maybe three people here tonight that are from the Cleveland area or from the right. northern, northeastern Ohio, which is really cool. And one of the big ones is Ohio State Reformatory. And now that's a place that you guys know Justin and I have been trying to get into for several years now, really. Yeah. Uh, and we've been struggling to get in there because it's so expensive. We're going to have to move here for a second. Oh, yep. Sorry, we got a car coming through. Mm. Not, literally, it's a cart. Uh, cart yeah. But anyway, so yeah, turns out the, now the reformatory typically closes around uh, October, November, and stays closed all the way through May. And as of last year, they decided to start keeping it open all year long because they replaced some of the windows that were originally cracked and would allow ice to form on the floors, which is why they would close and let yeah. people walk through. So definitely one thing I'd like to throw out to you guys, and maybe we're going to try this in the future, raise a little bit of money to help us get there and do a live show from the reformatory while doing somewhat of an investigation. Uh, Who knows? They may even give us a discount if we tell them we're doing a live show. They might, you know. And let me tell you, if you're going to promote people, let them know that and you can get all kinds of things. Um, (laughs) I'll tell you what, the the way conversations spark up when you say, hey, I got a business card here, I do a radio show, then boom, people are hooked and you start meeting all kinds of people here, which is really cool. Yeah, one thing that uh, we, just walking around here, uh, just the different people, there's a a YouTube uh, channel, which... I think it's called the horror. Uh, I'll have to tell you guys when we get over there. But uh, they they actually took our car and like we love to cross promote and you know it's good to see people that want to cooperate with other radio show hosts and YouTube channels and all that great stuff. So um, we are over here at the OPI. Uh, what are they called? Investigative group. Uh, no, the. This area, what, what is there? Yeah, yeah, no. The, what's in a booth? Booth, booth. That's it. Why are we talking about booth? <laughs> we killed Abraham Lincoln. We know. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that was. Is it too soon? Maybe. <laughs> Go on. It's, it's a hundred or so. <laughs> anyway, year, I think we're at OPI's good. booth. Uh, now, for those of you who listened in the past, you know that Justin had spoken with one of the founders or the founder of OPI, yeah, Mary Jo uh, which is off the trails paranormal we're actually here we're going to talk with Mary Jo hopefully uh, we have already given them a heads up that we're going to be over here so they're waiting for us right now so I think we should just get moving and get yeah. up here. and actually guys if you're hearing a lot of background noise it is kind of loud here so we do apologize but it is a, a event so there's a lot of stuff going on um, so let's see if we can talk to Mary Jo real fast Mary Jo, we're live, and we wanted to give you guys a chance to talk to us again, seeing as I finally have my co-host for this show. So uh, how are you guys doing for Scarefest so far? We're having a great time. I just came back from Scott's talk on the reformatory, and they've been doing some great interaction with some other teams here. Now, you have a lot of equipment. Is this stuff that you've just bought? You know, right off the bat, or have you slowly picked up your inventory as time has gone on? Slowly. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this, yeah. It's a big investment. Yeah. Yeah, I think we started with um, the, the two cameras mm-hmm. and a K2 meter, and then we build up from there. So, out of all the stuff sitting over here, what has to be your guys' favorite or a couple of favorites? Oh, well... Spirit Box SB11. Yeah. I use that a lot. Get a lot of EVPs off of that. Um, I like the flashlight. <laughs> That's always fun. It's always a good one. Oh, yeah, you yeah. don't want to be dumb bumping into <laughs> stuff while you're doing investigation. Um, Obelisk is definitely useful at times. Yeah. Uh, the REM pod, we've had good 
reactions yeah, we to that. that. A lot. And the mill too, the mill meter. Yeah, meter. Use that quite a bit. What I want is the movie floor. That's my wish list. <laughs> Video <laughs> floor, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so where can everybody find you guys, uh, website, all that great stuff? Go ahead. Okay. It'll be uh, www.offthetrailsparanormalinvestigations.org. Awesome. All right, we will be seeing you guys around, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to see you. Yep, yeah, you too. All right, folks, so that was OPI, Off the Trails Paranormal Society, uh, or Investigation Group, sorry. So we're walking down here, and we've got a bunch of different vendors, uh, Anna's Attic Treasures, Wolf Run, and uh, by far one of the weirdest places I think we've ever been to is Scarefest, because <laughs> Scare, Scarefest 2 was uh, weird enough, but... Uh, the fact that you got a cross-dressing man dressed as a dead nun, it kind of explains a lot. Right <laughs> right. <there>. Yeah. <laughs> And that is for this weird freak show type uh, thing that they've got here. Um, so some of the other things that they've got going on here, as I said, they have uh, Sid um, from uh, American Horror, or not American Horror, sorry, sorry, uh, Devil's Rejects and the House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, they've got uh, Chip Coffee, of course, which... I'm, I'm not going to say anything more than that. Uh, they've got... I told Savannah earlier, like, yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so we've got Josh Gates from Destination Truth. And uh, did you catch the new show that he's on? I can't remember it. I did not catch the new show, no. I kind of missed that part. But let me tell you, Josh Gates is probably one of the main reasons I decided to come here this year because he's one of my favorite guys on television in regards to the paranormal. It's very disappointing... Back in 2009, when you can get an autograph for free, and now, even though these people are currently working in the industry and making money, they're still going to charge you anywhere from 20 to 40 plus dollars just for an autograph or a picture. Yeah. Uh, Ten dollars for a picture, and it's just like, it, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I, I can't believe it. I'm kind of uh, upset that they would go and do that, especially with all their fans. They're just trying to mooch off of them and take all their money. Um, and of course, I'm not necessarily speaking from full experience because I don't know what they're. Uh, I guess what they're dealing with financially, they, yeah. they could be broke, I don't know. I'm sure those networks pay them well, though. Yeah. But, and, by the way, we just found Wado again. Yeah. <laughs> and he's hiding. He's hiding. <laughs> so they've got uh, a bunch of people from American Horror Story. Uh, Erica Irvin, Matt Fraser, uh, Rose Siggins, Jamie Brewer, who uh, actually does one of the characters that both Shelly and I love. Um, they've got Naomi Grossman who plays Pepper, who is another character that we love so much. Um, so definitely a great area. We are def we are in the back where all of the, the uh, different celebrities are right now. Um, they've got uh, um, oh, George uh, what's his name? Romero. Uh, they've got George Romero here who's actually uh, a big uh, name in horror Night of the Living Dead, as well as Dawn of the Dead. Uh, they've got the Booth Brothers here, as I said, Sid Haig, uh, as well as Robert Mukes from uh, House of Thousand Corpses. Uh, any of the people from the horror that you recognize or wanted to see at all? Not really, no. Uh, probably one of the... One maybe would be... Uh, oh, what's her name? Amanda... Beers, I think it's, it is, from Fright Night. Oh, The original okay. Fright Night, of course, not the one with, uh, what is his name, Colin, uh, Farrell? Colin Farrell? Oh. You seen the new one? Oh, you seen I, I haven't okay, seen you the new one. I haven't either. I've just seen the trailer. <laughs> um, and, of course, it wasn't worth it to me to check it out. But the original Fright Night, for those of you out there who are fans of the horror film genre, uh, probably one of the best movies really ever created yeah. when it comes to horror. I think the 70s, 80s horror was... That was their time, really. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's where it was. And, uh, you know, today it's all about jump scares. Yeah. Back then, it was a lot more psychological type stuff. And even with Fright Night in regards to, like... I, dude, it's just so much better back then. Period. <laughs> Simple as that. I don't know. I don't know where some of these films are going these days. 
Well, as I said to you, I mean, there's just way too many CGI effects anymore, too. Like, they don't rely on makeup and and as many jump scares as they used to. And uh, so... On that note, I'm looking forward to the revealed and hoping there's plenty of jump scares. Thank you, thank you. There are there are a few, and you know, since we're on the topic, for those of you who know or may not know, the Indiegogo uh, campaign did end today, this morning. So anyone who donated over the past few months uh, for the revealed, thank you for your donations. They're all going to go into great use. And uh, we start production in a week, guys. One week. I can't believe it. It's like six months ago that we started talking about it. Yeah. So uh, we are actually in the area right now uh, where John Morrison is and uh, Stephen Tash from Ghostbusters and Christine. And uh, the mystery machine is here. The original mystery machine that says... Uh, so... Uh, Definitely a lot of stuff going on here, guys. As I said, they've got the Munsters here, two of the original cast from the Munsters, as well as the woman that played Wednesday from the Adams Family, which is actually kind of interesting because if you grew up in the 60s and 70s, you guys probably did see this if you had uh, TV and what have you. Uh, Big thing for me, just because I did see the shows as a kid, Reruns, of course, because I'm a little bit younger than <laughs> that genre. Don't tell people lies. <laughs> so uh, we are in the area right now from uh, Ghostly Encounters and uh, Ghost Asylum, which I've actually never heard of, but uh, apparently they are on. Uh, one thing that both Eric and I did see from Destination America uh Oh, it's Chip Coffee that actually is from that. That explains it. Uh, yeah, Exorcism Live, which both him and I both don't agree with, even though we come from different viewpoints right now. Um, with, with that said, why don't you guys tune into this, like, chime in, I should say. Email us and let us know what you think. Should we allowed to, uh, or should people be allowed to do an exorcism live on television? Now, I'm not saying that this exorcism is 100% legit or even real. It's TV. It could all be faked. We don't know. But if it isn't, is it something that's okay? And what if you don't have the person who's possessed their authorization to go ahead and do such a thing? Right. And what do you think? Is that okay? Or do you think this is just glorifying the devil and perhaps even opening people up to doors that they really don't want to be opening? Well, even from a standpoint on my end, even if they did give their consent, I feel it's very disrespectful to these people and uh, even to the Christian community in respect that uh, that's just pulling in something that you don't... I mean, what if the demon did come out and jumped into one of the uh, watchers of the show? You know, um, something that probably not too many of the producers think about uh but uh we are coming close to our first break here uh we are live from scarefest uh as i said a lot of big things going on here the booth brothers are actually pretty big in the paranormal community but as eric said most of these people unfortunately are charging for autographs some of them are doing free photos like sid haig awesome guy he does charge for his autograph but we got to sit me and shelly got to sit with him and actually get our photos taken with him so it was actually a privilege to just sit there with him just because i'm a huge fan um of captain spaulding so uh we've got a lot of great stuff for you guys coming up but first we have eric's random fact of the day we will be right back with paratruth radio Sometimes we use things differently than how they were originally intended. Take bubble wrap, for instance. People use bubble wrap on a daily basis to protect items that they ship from one place to another. And of course, kids and adults alike love to just sit back and pop bubble wrap. However, did you know that bubble wrap had a much different purpose when originally created? According to factslides.com, bubble wrap was initially created to be used as a easy-to-clean wallpaper. 
All right, folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And we are live from Scarefest 8 2015. Uh, as we've been saying, you know, there's a lot of go- stuff going on here. Uh, we've got people from Ghost Asylum, uh, The Exorcism Live, as we just got done talking about, uh, Ghostly Encounters. Have you ever seen Ghostly Encounters? I have, yeah. Are they one of the better ones or not so good ones? Yeah, I'm personally not a huge fan. That's I think that's more of like the uh, documentary style uh, shows that they have on TV. Like Not like... Uh, Ghost Adventures, you know how they do kind of a documentary thing. Yeah, Yeah, this is kind of like a lot of reenactments, and they they talk with people who've actually experienced it. And I think they even have one where they work with celebrities who had, you know, some of the encounters as well. So, uh, some of the other stuff they've got going on here, as we said, we've got vendors all over the place. Um, Some of the stuff that you'll see is. Murder Charms by the Grim Life Collective. <laughs> yeah, which is really weird because they have a lot of necklaces that have skulls of animals on them. Uh, and it's kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to say the least. Um, we've got uh, Caulfield Novelty, which is actually the, uh, the one uh, vehicle that's parked at the front door here. Uh, we've got uh, JR Mounts from the Fried Pickle Noir. Um, Actually, maybe we can... Oh, yeah, Brett Gray art. He's got a bunch of different, like, werewolf and vampire art here. And I'll let you know right now, I'm probably going to end up buying one of these portraits. <laughs> probably tomorrow. There's this one about with a werewolf, just the head of the werewolf, and behind him is a full moon, but there's, like, these faces projecting out of the moon, and they're all, like, deteriorated and weird, and it's crazy cool. I know so many people are thinking, oh, this dude's a freak, <laughs> but... Yeah. He's definitely a very good artist, uh, he, and he just works with uh, black and white and gray. Uh, look, at, look at what he's doing right here. I'm sorry. I wish. I really wish we had a video feed or something for you guys because the artwork that he's doing right now live is just amazing. Yeah. He's doing it with a charcoal pencil. And actually, maybe we will get, if you guys have the Periscope app, we'll maybe get on the Periscope and... Uh, do some video for you guys uh, we just wanted to do an audio show just because that's what our show is is an audio show um, so I want to try and see if we can get JR Mounts on um, we are doing a live show and wanted to see if you wanted to get on air with of us of course I'm an equal opportunity megalomaniac <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how is Scarefest going for you oh it's awesome man it kicks off for Halloween for us <laughs> yeah you know we need Halloween in September every time <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> so for our listeners uh, tell us a little bit about you uh, I'm J.R. Mounts I do the Fried Pickle Noir comic book series as well as the Scary Tales comic book series Fried Pickle Noir is uh, Sin City meets Veggie Tales crime stories for fruits and vegetables going at it mob style in a seedless <laughs> city called the pits starring detective q cumbersome it's all very serious awesome. stuff as yeah, you can tell you yeah. <laughs> they're rated v for vegetable violence is what I can tell you, <laughs> and the only comic books guaranteed by the fda to be healthy to read <laughs> so <laughs> yeah right yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is there anybody that you're looking forward to seeing here at scarefest and there's, there's angus scrim i mean of course george romero uh, yeah that, that's that's a tent pole for me you know but look you also got the christine Carr here you got dragula here there's there's wall-to-wall stuff man yeah. the problem is staying behind my booth this week yeah right <laughs> that's the hard time <laughs> and you can only ask the wife for so long to <laughs> yeah, stick in yeah. for you. Being that she's here, she yeah. can see me get out of the booth. Like, I know you're, you need to get right back here, buddy. Sell your comic books. <laughs> well, long? it's a living, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How long have you actually been doing this? How long have you been drawing now? I started and- October of 2010. Okay. I was a musician that uh, was sure that my lot in life was supposed to be a rock star or, yeah. or writing for Nashville. Yeah. But, you know, I'm still working on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> That clearly is a, is a dream in waiting. Right. Dream yeah. So until then, I thought, let's draw some comic books. Right. You know. Yeah. Oh, and it's always good to have a back. back uh, <laughs> yeah, something to some slide back, back on. on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
So, um, all right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And uh, we were glad to have you. No problem. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. So that was JR Mounts. So you guys, uh, just to see how personable a lot of these people are, even though some of the stuff is very freaky, <laughs> very scary. Um, some of the people here, even though they're selling some really creepy stuff, like this right here, Art Undead, yeah. is yeah. insane. There's a picture of, or a uh, doll of Gizmo, a stuffed Gizmo, which is just torn to pieces with yeah. blood and guts hanging out of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, these people, they don't look, they don't look different. You know, they don't no. look bad. They, they look like normal people. They look like yeah. me and Justin, which I don't know if it's a good thing, but, <laughs> you know, they're probably more attractive. Probably. <laughs> so, uh couple of the other things we got going on here we got adventure scents they sell candles uh bath salts that sort of great stuff uh a lot of you know horror movie memorabilia i just saw supernatural t-shirts going on over there speaking of supernatural for those of you fans out there uh they do have a mock-up of the 1967 chevy impala here with the Ohio license plates and all the weapons in the trunk. It's really cool. And honestly, right now, I got a bunch of like action figures drawing my attention because I see a green arrow, so I'll be right back. <laughs> all right, so yeah, you guys, uh, definitely if you're in the area, Lexington Comic and Toy Convention, LLC, is where we're at. They have a booth here. Uh, a lot of different action figures, comic book memorabilia. They've got a bust of Deadpool, it looks like, there. Uh, and uh, a lot of great stuff going on here. They've got the rat tail here, which is another uh, jewelry type of thing. Uh, they've got uh, made-up little coffins that uh, both Shelly and I were looking at. Uh, awesome, awesome vendor here. Um, as you can hear... Like I said, if you guys are hearing it and it's a little loud, um, they got the Predator, uh, officially licensed Predator uh, statues standing up over here right in front. Uh, trying to think of what else was going on here. Uh, they've got a bunch of different uh, speakers going on, you know, um, from Josh Gates to Chris Dedman, uh, a couple others. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring my program with me to tell you guys all that's going on here. Uh, but we are in the vendor section. Um, they've got uh, Z Talk Radio, Paranormal Radio. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see here. Oh, the Night Owl Workshop where. We have a $500 plush dinosaur but that both Shelly and Eric want. Which is torn, by the way, so I think we should get a discount. <laughs> right, right. Uh, we've got Abbott's Hollow Studios, which uh, has a lot of leather-bound things, uh, journals, uh, chests, tissue covers, um, a, a lot of great uh, and interesting things here. And, uh, you know... One of the things that Eric and I talked about was we got the, the gold pass, and the only thing that anybody could talk about was the fact that we got free booze <laughs> in our gold pass. And it's like Eric even said, it's really sad. <laughs> the only thing we could talk about is that we got free booze in our gold pass. Um, so some of the other stuff we got here is the Ghostbuster troop i guess you can call them i'm not even sure what i mean they're in the ghostbusters ambulance i don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh it, they are the western kentucky ghostbusters uh so maybe somebody to get on the show with us as well at some point um a lot of other memorabilia here like uh spider stop shop uh got a, a big critters character standing in the corner here that's a uh, little freaky looking and uh and i'll tell you what you know some of these things we're talking about i am taking pictures and video and i will post these later or probably have justin post them because you know i'm not necessarily tech savvy when it comes to our <laughs> radio show um but yeah we'll post some of these things up so you can see them probably about both on facebook and probably paratruthradio.com yeah uh, i'm we will get up on Twitter, you know, all of our different social networks. And as I said, if you guys have the Periscope app, we will uh, try to 
do some periscoping, maybe even at the VIP party, but because we do get into the VIP party here this year. Um, I think we did last time we were here as well, but uh, we had to have our media passes. This time we're more of a uh, spectator compared to last time because we were with Parax Radio back then. Uh, We were a little nervous to see if they were here (laughs) because it would have been a little awkward. So, uh, So, you know, some of the other stuff going on here, as we said, we got this weird freak show thing in front of us here um we've got a lot of the different people uh we've got uh vincent price's daughter is actually here so huge thing for me because i'm a, a big fan of vincent price mostly because he was the voice in thriller but <laughs> there's a lot of other stuff horror movies he was in and that sort of stuff um you know we've got uh a lot of weird vendors you know there's a lot of as i said a lot of occult vendors here uh as i said too if you guys are here and listening live come check us out uh we are by the uh, dreamwalker productions booth right now uh and the the little freak show circus envy i believe it's called um and as i said to shelly i don't know why people would bring their kids to this it's a little disturbing, really. And also, they get, they've got some interesting things where they're uh, colorful whips, and there's a girl <laughs> wearing that so much behind the counter there. <laughs> so, obviously, to bring your kids here just doesn't really make sense yeah, in that alone. But, uh... <laughs> and actually, there's also... I can't think of his name, but if you've ever seen the first Fast and Furious movie, you know the small guy that drove the uh, Volkswagen Jetta? The, the one that gets killed at the end of the movie, actually? He's here. And in fact, we just passed him. I'm actually surprised because oh, okay. I did not expect him to be here. And he's not here to promote Fast and Furious or anything else. He's actually promoting something called Lost Limbs Foundation, which is just absolutely amazing to see an actor, a literal, a literal Hollywood actor, go out and take time out of his day doing something that probably he's not getting paid for it. I highly doubt he's getting paid for this. Yeah. Um, so it's if great. he has a booth, he's actually probably paying for the booth. Yeah, he's probably paying for the booth, and he's signing autographs right now. And as far as I can tell, he is. Uh, so they are charging for autographs and pictures there. But honestly, that's not a bad thing because actually, it's donating to the cause. Yeah, it, it looks like you just pay for the photo and you get the autograph, which is a little bit different than being like, hey. I'm actually uh, charging you for my autograph instead of, hey, buy this picture and I'll sign it for free. So, uh, like I said, a lot of people here charging and, you know, as Eric had mentioned, you know, we don't know their, their financial information. But, you know, from somebody who doesn't make money with <laughs> his show, uh, you know, it would be one thing if you're not a huge celebrity and you're charging for your autograph but i don't think very many people would (laughs) come pay us for our autographs (laughs) but uh so we're over here by the dixie boy truck stop or uh, i'm sorry hollywood prop collector uh nightmares unlimited that sort of uh couple things here vendors um and uh we're also by the george romero booth uh, one thing that I do have to say is uh, I keep talking about Sid Haig, but he was definitely a very personable guy. He sat and talked to both Shelly and myself and uh, told us stories. Uh, actually, might have a chance to get him on the show. Um, that's That was the other thing, too. Like We've had a lot of people where we've been able to span out a little bit and get our cards out there and just... Uh, get the name Paratruth Radio out there. So uh, we've got uh, roughly about uh, 30 minutes left in the show. We actually might cut it a little early because we are at a live event. Do what? Yeah. Uh, We're going to go to our next break here. Go ahead there, Eric. All right, folks. So as Justin just said, we are going to the next break right now. So stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy today's Paranormal Headlines. And now, Parachute Radio's Paranormal Headlines. Hey, Parafans. Justin here with your Paranormal Headlines. 
These headlines are from unexplainedmysteries.com. Huge red ball breaks loose on Ohio streets. A massive red ball that was part of an art installation was catapulted down a street due to strong winds. The bizarre spectacle was caught on film by Jeremy Folk as the huge red ball, which was part of the Red Ball Project, broke loose from its position between a jeweler shop and a restaurant in Toledo. The gigantic ball was blown a considerable distance down the street by an unexpected gale as it bumped into cars and narrowly missed lampposts at the side of the road. In the video, which was filmed from a nearby rooftop, several people can be seen attempting to chase the ball before it eventually came to a stop on the pavement in front of some shops. Fortunately, nobody was injured and the ball didn't cause any damage to the cars it hit. Rover discovers huge water deposit on Mars. NASA's Curiosity rover has discovered a large amount of water beneath buckskin rock in the Marius Pass. Despite appearances, the barren, desolate sands of Mars are actually not as dry as they seem. Thanks to its onboard drilling apparatus, the rover, which arrived on Mars in 2012, has this week uncovered a hidden water deposit located only a short distance beneath the surface of the planet. The discovery was made using the rover's dynamic albedo of neutrons tool, an active passive neutron spectrometer which works by looking for the hydrogen in water molecules. The ground about one meter beneath the rover in this area holds three or four times as much water as the ground anywhere else Curiosity has driven during its three years on Mars, said Principal Investigator Igor Mitrovanov. The find is very promising as it offers further evidence to suggest that the conditions on Mars were once a lot more favorable than they are today and that life may have been able to survive there. The main mission objective now is to examine layers of lower Mount Sharp for ancient habitable environments and evidence about how early Mars environments evolved from wetter to drier conditions. NASA wrote in a press release in its website. And this has been Justin with your Paranormal Headlines. This was a segment of Parachute Radio's Paranormal Headlines. What's up, folks? Welcome back to Parachute Radio. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And we are live at Scarefest 8 here in Lexington, Kentucky. So uh, we just walked by Dracula Santa. And <laughs> I honestly don't know how to feel about that because I, I love Santa. And now <laughs> he's a vampire. <laughs> Um, and then uh, we did get the name of the guy from uh, Fast and Furious, is Chad Lindbergh. Uh, what character did he play in? Uh, he played Jesse, okay. which is a guy who he's not really necessarily a main, main character, but he did help to drive the story forward a bit. But he ends up, he's basically one of those characters that everybody loves on film. He's just like this sweet dude, you know, that, that you see in the film. Oh. And he ends up getting killed in the end, which is what promotes or pushes... Vin Diesel's character and Paul Walker's character into going after their uh, enemies and basically trying to stop them. Yeah. So, so uh, we're in front of the Munsters right now and they've got the Munster Mobile here and looks like a couple of them um, or Dracula rep- Dragula replica car here. It's kind of like a Dracula coffin that's been made into a race car. Um, you know, Coming to Scarefest again is probably a little overwhelming, but also exciting, just because we do get to do a live show here. Last time we were just kind of hanging out at the Para-X booth and didn't really do a whole lot, um, but we do get to finally go and uh, sit in a couple of the different uh, people, uh, speakers, uh, 
things going on and uh, ones that we actually want to listen to, not necessarily ones people are telling us to go listen to. So uh, definitely come check it out if you guys are here. It's an amazing atmosphere as well. Um, as we said, d- different horror characters here, different uh, paranormal people here. Um, and this is just kind of an off note. I just walked past Centex Paranormal. They have some pretty funny sh- uh, shirts. One in particular that is really great is a purple shirt that says the first ghost hunter and it's a picture of Pac-Man chasing down a ghost. <laughs> brilliant. Actually brilliant. Boy, I hope right. And kind of true actually so uh you know we're going by uh midnight crafts and the twisted realm uh from twisted paranormal society uh we've got haunted funhouse books uh rock and horror and again we're over by the the ghost hunter shop um or ghost hunt shop sorry so it's been a, a definite ride so far. As I said, we will be at the VIP party. Uh, we get to go to the costume ball tomorrow night. Uh, so maybe we'll be periscoping a little bit uh, a couple of times tonight, tomorrow, and even into Sunday probably. Um, so definitely a lot to check out, guys. Uh, I think that's about all I've got. Um, did you want to add anything? No? No, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, one last time uh, before Eric starts airing, I wanted to give him a chance just to promote the film because it will be out in the fall of next year, uh, hitting the uh, festival circuit and all that great stuff. He did tell you guys that, uh, unfortunately, the the uh, time for donating has come to an end. Uh, he did have a lot of people donate, and uh, I think he's got a good budget going for him. So uh, I'll let him promote that one more time here. Yes. Yeah, so uh, the revealed guys, uh, you know, if you really wanted to, you can still donate. It would help us a lot in post production because there are special effects that we are adding, uh, and of course that costs money as well. Currently, the money that we have, we're trying to save to post production, but a lot of it is going to go to the actual production, in which we're going to buy food and do all the on set uh, at special effects and whatnot, especially in regards to levitation and what things like that but um <clears throat> if anything please continue to pray about the film we start filming not this upcoming week but the following week it's a 10-day shoot we're working anywhere from 10 to 12 plus hours a day and uh one thing that if you guys would really do which would i would appreciate is go to facebook go to the revealed movie facebook.com forward slash the revealed movie and just like it like it share it with your friends just that way you can follow along and see what we're doing on a daily basis. So, so definitely check that out, guys. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, the Indiegogo link will be taken down. Uh, but uh, the if you click on the Creative Works tab, you'll still see the synopsis and the uh, artwork that he has for the revealed. Uh, definitely looking forward to it. And, you know, I'm sure Eric is looking forward to making it. Uh, you do have both of your main actors finally cast and uh so i wanted to give you a chance to tell everybody uh if you're willing to tell everybody who's going to be in it yeah so uh the main lead character of abigail franklin is going to be played by aaron skirback it's actually my sister she is a professional actor she's currently out in la and i'm flying her in to do this to do the film uh, the second main character or the supporting character for the film is the character's name is Sam Toll and it's going to be played by Andrew Spizzato uh, I actually met him a few weeks ago after playing about it and thinking about it and going through a couple of other auditions I really felt like he could bring the character to life he's got the look I think with a little bit of work we're going to just nail this character and it's really going to bring the entire movie uh, to where I think it should be on both a <clears throat> horror level horror sci-fi level because it'll make it nice and scary yeah but also on a psychological level as well because his character is kind of speaking with abby on a psychological uh matter you know that everything she's witnessing isn't necessarily real and that's what he believes anyway and so yeah i you know that's our two main characters they're both going to pull it off they've done great work in the past 
Um, I'm looking forward to working with Andrew. I've never worked with him before. And I am currently looking for three more actors, which is going to play our alien race. So <laughs> that'll be fun. So, uh, all right, folks, that's all we got for you this week. Uh, as I said, you'll probably be able to catch us on Periscope if you have the Periscope app. Uh, if you are at Scarefest as well, uh, there's a lot of freaky people walking around. <laughs> <laughs> in costumes as well as some of the people here just as spectators of uh, you know it, they do dress up here and uh, have a lot of uh, great things going on so uh, definitely if you're here come check us out uh, we will be wearing our paratroop t-shirts tomorrow and uh, so you'll be able to identify us but also if you are a in our Christian listener groups obviously of course, uh, we do understand if it's a little too much for you guys. It is a lot to take in, even coming from my perspective as well. Uh, some disturbing, some just kind of weird, and oddly enough, some a little cute. So um, on that note, folks, we will talk to you guys next week. Same time, same channel. I am Justin. And I am Eric. And we will talk to you guys next week. Peace.